Welcome back. Part of being America's sea service is that you have a unique set of logistical challenges that the other branches don't face. For instance, how do you load dozens of missiles onto a vessel that's tossing in the waves? That's not the only issue the Navy's trying to crack. Others include at-sea maintenance for ships and subs, more accessible logistics hubs, and medical facilities for sailors. One industry partner with a big idea is Lidos, and it breaks down to this. Guys, what if we buy some unused oil rigs on the cheap and convert them into floating naval hubs? Could that work? Lidos thinks it can. The company was on hand at a recent Service Navy Association symposium to talk about the idea and explain how it could all work. Check it out. I'm Ray Sheldon. I am the president of Gibson Cox, a subsidiary of Lidos. What I'd like to talk to you about today is our concept to take available mobile offshore drilling units that are currently in cold storage on the Gulf and convert them to highly capable, affordable force multipliers for any future fight in the Pacific. We're targeting a very specific class of oil rigs, and these are MODUs mobile offshore drilling units. Generally, they will do about eight knots. We have engineered some hull form changes, essentially um, add-ons to the bow and stern that'll push that up to 12 knots. So a billion dollar asset that you can buy for 10 cents on the dollar, despite the fact that they're in excellent material condition. One of the ideas we have is that because they're uh, relatively inexpensive, um, the lease cost for them is relatively low. So one of the things that we pursued with the owners is to take up a short-term charter so that the basic concept of operations could be proven out before we proceeded to an actual program. But the, um, but the key point is that um, for less than $500 million, uh, we can put this capability in the hands of the warfighter, it just ends up being a huge force multiplier. So the, um, you no longer have to think about a DDG making the trip across the Pacific to um, a land base to be rearmed. They can be rearmed close to theater um, you know, with maybe a few days off of station, not you know, weeks. And the turnaround time, because of the speed loader concept we have, um, is also greatly reduced. So our loading rate, our VLS loading, loading rate, is um, something on the order of four times what it would be um, using conventional systems. So we've got five discrete missions laid out here, so a submarine tender, a logistics hub, reload at sea, a repair hub. The platform could also serve as a very large and capable a uh, hospital ship or disaster recovery uh, vessel. Depending on the mission, there are things that we don't need on these rigs. Um, they come off. Uh, most of the missions we'd envision keep the cranes because they're a very valuable asset. Uh, the platforms have moon pools, which make them uh, very attractive as USV, UUV uh, motherships. And then we get into the how far do you want to go and how much do you want to spend. So one of the assets that these platforms have is they have um, a very large amount of tankage for drilling materials, mud tanks. Um, uh, those can be um, cleaned out, repurposed, and they can carry fuel. You know, we think the uh, conversions of this are gonna be, depending on scope, between 12 and 24 months. The hardest part of this is getting somebody to give us a chance to do it. From the functional standpoint, uh, there really aren't any hard spots. This is just uh, a simple, straightforward job of large magnitude that taps into one of the most productive and efficient parts of the maritime industry in the U.S., the offshore oil industry. 